て、それではお時間となりましたので。Thank you very much. Before waiting, we will start the breakthrough for safer digital custody, security, and regulations. This is the panel. Introduction of our panelists. Hokan Digital Services, a founder and CDO, Mr. Aldro Lo Castro, from Hobi. Ms. Flora Lee, from Kraken CEO, Mr. David Ripley, CASA co-founder, CTO, Mr. Jameson Lop. Last but not least, our moderator from Georgetown University, research professor, Matsuo Shinichiro, Professor Matsuo. I will hand over the microphone to Matsuo-san. Thank you. The topic of this panel discussion is on the security of custodian. So you know that in Japan, that there are many uh, mega breach if, uh, from 2017 happened. Then that for Japanese uh, blockchain persons, so security of custodian is a big issue. And I'd like to have that 40 minutes panel discussion on the uh, how to securing uh, cryptocurrency exchange and custody. So here, so we use the word of custody instead of cryptocurrency exchange. And uh, anyway, so let, ha let us have a so great discussion upcoming for the 40 minutes. And I would like to ask each of panelists to give a self-introduction for one minute. And I would like to ask Aldo, Ka Aldo Castro, so could you uh, introduce yourself briefly? Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Aldo Castro. I am the CEO of Hokan, the Service Limited, and the co-editor of um, the ISO technical report on the security management of digital asset custodians. And my main role here today is uh, to talk to you about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next, so I'd like to ask Flora to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Flora. I'm from Hobby Research, and it's really nice to meet you. And thank you for inviting me to this panel. And Hobby was set up in 2013 uh, in China, and it has been seven years we are dedicated in cryptocurrency area. Um, besides the exchange business, we also have Hobby Wallet, Hobby Pool, Hobby Chat, Hobby Labs. Hobby College and Hobby Research. And I'm from the Hobby Research. We are focused on the research of blockchain technology, application, and industry development. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next is David. So could you introduce yourself? Hi, pleased to be here with all of you today, uh, virtually at least. Uh, Chief Operating Officer with Kraken Digital Asset Exchange. Uh, Kraken's one of the, the earliest and, and largest um, cryptocurrency exchanges, digital asset exchanges, uh, really in the world, um, operating across the majority of the countries uh, out there. Um, myself, as I mentioned, I'm Chief Operating Officer with the, the firm. A uh, little bit, bit of background on myself. I previously founded a company, Glidera, in the uh, crypto industry that was acquired by Kraken in 2016. I uh, joined the firm at, at that time as COO. Uh, previous to that, uh, by training, I'm an engineer, so I spent some time as a software engineer and product manager, and uh, then also spent some time at the, the Boston Consulting Group as a, a strategy consultant following my uh, time at, uh, achieving my MBA at uh, College School of Management at Northwestern University. Thank you very much. And last, so I'd like to James on top to introduce yourself. Hi, thank you. I've been working in the Bitcoin and crypto security space for about five years. I spent three years building infrastructure at BitGo, doing multi-sig enterprise security. 
I unfortunately saw a number of mishaps happen. We, we were helping to power exchanges and other enterprises and succeeded in many cases, but failed in a few others. So I uh, have learned a lot over the past few years, sometimes through hard lessons, and now am focused on using multi-signature aspects of these protocols to help individuals secure their assets as well. So in addition to working uh, on building these platforms for security. I also serve on an advisory capacity to the cryptocurrency consortium, helping to work on standards and uh, ability for us to create auditors and examinations and certifications to really build on top of the existing ISO uh, certification process, but with a, a more specific focus on the crypto asset space. So we certainly still have a lot of learning left to do, and uh, it's very exciting to be here. Thank you very much. But anyway, so so you look so mysterious. Where are you? <laughs> Somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, so today, uh, during today's so discussion, I prepared three questions. But uh, so I would like to start with the first one. And uh, the first one is: uh, so What is the role of the custody in blockchain ecosystem? So we need to have a common understanding. So what the digital asset custody or crypto asset custody is. And I'd like to ask Flora first, and so what is the role of custody in this ecosystem? Thank you, thank you for your question. Um, I think custody service is an inevitable option for the development of blockchain ecosystem. And the main utility of cryptocurrency custody lies in the safeguarding of cryptocurrency assets, uh, private keys which are used to conduct transactions or access crypto holdings are a complex combination of alphabetic numerics, and they are extremely difficult to remember and can be stolen or hacked. So we need a professional institution to help us keep our safe asset safety. Mm -hmm. um, the other important reason for the uh, existence of cryptocurrency custody solution is regulation. Um, according to America SEC regulation, um, uh, as part of the Dog frank Act, institutional investors that have customer assets worth more than uh, $150,000 are required to store the holdings with a qualified custodian. The SEC's definition of such entities includes banks and civil associations and registered broker dealers, uh, future commission merchants and foreign financial institutions are also included in this definition. So. And digital custody business is a very important part to attract more investors and institutions to set foot in this cryptocurrency industry. So what we do attach importance to this area. And we have already provided brokerage service for institutions and high net worth individuals. And also taking care of customers' assets is is one of our service. Um, besides, besides in Japan, we have a quite a DLT license, mm -hmm. that is distributed ledger technology uh, in Gibraltar, which is a banking level KYC AML standard to ensure a secure trading environment. And, we can, and this can allow us to do custody business. And besides that, we are also working on other countries' license or permissions. Mm. Uh, although I can't share too much information about the unpublished products, but what I want to emphasize is that we will provide more financial products and custody service under regulation in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to ask the same question to David. 
Yeah. So uh, I think first off, Flora was uh, had a, actually a very very comprehensive uh, answer. So I can probably just try and highlight a couple couple pieces there because I think it was uh, very comprehensive and, and clear and covered a lot of the relevant aspects. So I think first off, one of the things that when individuals think about custody, they think about safekeeping of assets, which uh, is absolutely at its core, right? So securely uh, safekeeping of digital assets. Um, I think one of the things that, you know, is less top of mind for individuals is that, you know, once, once an institution takes on custody of those assets and secure safekeeping, that's actually uh, puts the institution in a place where they also control the means of transacting with the blockchain itself. And so uh, literally everything depends upon being able to sign transactions in order to in interact with a with a cryptocurrency network, you know, from, you know, exchanging and trading assets to interfacing with more advanced smart contracts. DeFi applications and, and someday the, the you know further off longer term Web 3.0 applications and so inherent in that I think you know once a you know institution could of course provide a, a simple storage service but you know the richness of the blockchain certainly um, is tied to being able to actually you know sign transactions and, and interact with the, the the network in a much more uh, holistic way. And then probably the other thing that I would point out, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if Jameson touches on this as well, but I think it's important to note that, you know, when we talk about securing digital assets, there's both a non-custodial path and a custodial path. And you know, cryptocurrency is really the first you know, digital asset that has existed uh, ever where individuals can actually uh, store these digital assets in a non-custodial way, you know, typically by leveraging some type of open source software and or hardware uh, wallet of, of some sort. And so I think that's actually meaningful and uh, a key piece of the industry. So while, you know, Kraken itself is a, a custodian, um, you know, the non-custodial solutions, I think, actually play a, a significant role here. Um, so coming back over to the, the custodial side, I, I do agree with Flora that, you know, once a financial institution kind of puts itself in this position of taking custody of a, another individual or business's uh, digital assets, then yes, I, you know, I think this is where we see regulation coming into play. And, you know, she did a, a good job of pointing out, you know, a particular example in the U.S., where it's actually a requirement that some investment funds uh, work with qualified custodians, and uh, we don't expect that that to uh, you know that to you know change due to to digital assets. Um, so, you know, I think the um, probably the last thing to to touch on is that you know I think you know for a while custody and, and security was there was a it was a big question on. You know, was the industry going to get past these challenges given all the hacks? I think, you know, from my perspective, I, I actually don't think it's necessarily holding back the the industry per se. However, I do think that, you know, the increasing levels of security uh, that simultaneously address ease of use are absolutely critical to, to moving this, this industry forward. Thank you very much. I think that so... Custodian, so crypto asset custodian, digital asset custodian may play the same role as uh, what the internet service provider play, uh, plays a role for the, the internet. This is a so entry point for the end users to the ecosystem of the, the internet and the, the uh, blockchain ecosystem. But uh, I think that this is a more, uh, this, there are many uh, important roles for the business, business side and the regulation side. But so I would like to ask Jameson uh, the, on the role of custody from the technology point of view or key management. So you are the technology person and uh, could you uh, let us know that what, why that custody is important from the technology point of view? Absolutely. Uh, really, like uh, Dave was saying, 
Security is actually pretty easy. If you want to secure something, if you want to secure keys, then all you have to do is bury them inside of a mountain where nobody can access them. You know, uh, we had a service called Zappo that was doing that and literally using nuclear bunkers and vaults uh, to to make sure that no one could get those keys. But that really misses out on a lot of the utility that these new protocols and networks are providing. So the question becomes, can we provide security in a way where we have layers of authorization that ensure that only the correct entities are able to uh, authorize transactions to happen on these networks? And and, you know, does that mean we need better security with traditional custodians? Certainly, that's because these large custodians are very valuable targets. They may have hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of value stored in a single entity that you know, will attract a lot of attention from various attackers. Um, it also means that we need better security for individuals so that, uh, you know, if, if an individual comes into this system, they don't have a catastrophic mistake that results in them losing everything and no longer wanting to use these systems. That would be terrible for adoption. And the great thing is that now we can actually create these hybrid models. It doesn't have to be one or the other. We can create new types of collaborative custody where perhaps you have both a somewhat trusted large institution or custodial provider working in concert with the individual. Uh, this is where things like multi-signature transactions and aspects of these protocols come into play. We can create much richer type of authorization models that can work for both you know automated systems and you know implement various business logic or uh, you know require human auditors to step in whenever it looks like something odd might be happening so it's it's really uh, our game to lose if we don't innovate in this space and create new types of custody that haven't really been seen before thank you very much that, that's uh, interesting uh view that I would like to j jump in that uh, detailed discussion on how we s how to securing that custody. At first, I would like to ask Florent David on the current security challenge uh, on your custody. Firstly, so I would like to ask Flora, so what is uh, your security challenge in organizing Hobi uh, custody service? Okay, thank you for your question. Um, I think security is the most important thing to our business. And I'm proud to say that Hobby is safe running for seven years. Our customer never lose a penny. To achieve this, we have the most professional security team. And this team is one of our biggest departments in our company. Talking about custody security challenge, I think operational and technical considerations may be the most important parts. First, talking about the operational considerations. First, verification measures such as multi-factor authentication should be put in place to reduce fraud risk and to confirm the process withdraw assets from the custody platform, as well as procedures to approve and authenticate transactions above certain limits. And actions including technical solutions and surveillance to prevent, detect, or deter money laundry, mm. terrorist financing, or sanctions risk are also quite important. Furthermore, a third-party technological audit is needed including in respect to risk, compliance, and cybersecurity. Um, besides, it is also necessary to do staff management to ensure that a single person cannot execute and sign a transaction on behalf of a client. We may rely on operational and technological checks and balances to reduce risks associated with control and 
access to customers' holdings. Mm, finally, maybe dedicated insurance is also necessary to guarantee the whole business is running with low risks and make sure that our customers are with low risks. Mm. Second, take a view of the technical considerations. Um, the system needs to be designed to enable a high degree of security and operational reliability with adequate and scalable capacity. We also need a database recovery plan to deal with some unexpected server issues like system crash or attack and network security contingency plan to tackle with hacker attack. And most important, how we store the keys. We must make sure the best practice standards like strong encryption is needed, the sum of the keys required to transact are not stored in one physical location and so as to back up keys. What I have mentioned are just a part of the security concerns. In fact, there are a plenty of work to do before we are able to provide a secure and reliable custody service. Thank you. Thank you. There are many, many Problem on the security to organizing secure custody, but uh, so yeah. Dave. So do you have any uh, thoughts or your addition uh, from the Kraken point of view? Yeah, no. So I think again, again, great, great, uh, comprehensive answer by Flora. I think I'll, I'll try and keep it short because she did cover a lot of a lot of great things there. I mean, I would break it down. You know, uh, there are a few things with regard to the security challenge. So I mean, there's the security itself. I would also um, come back to the, the user experience and ease of use um, as another key input here. And then regulation, um, you know, once again, when we're talking about custodians, I, I think it's it's something that we're going to increasingly see. So, you know, first off on the security itself, um, you know, at Kraken, we sometimes say that, you know, we're a security company with an exchange built on top. Um, and so it's definitely one of the, the core areas of our, our business as well. And one of the ones we, we absolutely you know, take incredibly seriously. Um, and I think, you know, kind of Flora, Flora went in this direction, but it's important to note that, I mean, when we talk about security for an institution like ourselves, it's, it absolutely doesn't stop with the, the technical side of things. Yep, for sure, that's a, a meaningful piece, absolutely product security, the systems, the data, the user security side of it, absolutely all, all key. But, you know, we go beyond that uh, and we have to go beyond that to thinking about, you know, what are the processes we have in place to build this software and, and deploy it? Actually, what are all the processes we have in place as a company? Um, you know, thinking about also our internal IT systems, not even the product or, or exchange itself, um, but even just our, you know, our HR and finance systems as those can be actually leveraged sometimes as attack factors. Um, our vendors, suppliers, partners generally, security of our offices, um, you know, our employee physical security while they're traveling. So, um, you know, there's just a, every dimension you could, could imagine with regard to running a business as, you know, needs to have a kind of entirely different approach from a security standpoint. And, you know, we're thinking about attackers that, you know, range from individuals uh, to crime rings to even coordinated nation states or, or even our own employees as a potential uh, threat factor. So it's really significant from that standpoint. And I think, you know, the, the biggest challenge is we have to, again, we have to do all of this while, you know, providing a kind of like clean and, and simple to use user experience for, for users. This is uh, you know, one of the things that that actually makes the challenge is is what it is, and so you know, it certainly you know can't be can't be too complex, or or we failed in in delivering what we need to. And then lastly, the third point, um, again, yeah, I do think uh, you know we're starting to see um, it varies by geography, it varies by country, but we're starting to see regulation become a bigger and bigger uh, component as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, so balancing that user experience, usability, and security is so usually so hard things, but uh, it's more uh, it's harder though for the custody, and uh, it's time for order. So, so 
I and Aldo are the co-editor of that ISO technical report for the security of custodian. And uh, so I would like to ask Aldo to explain that uh, the abstract of ISO technical report on the security of custodian. Yes, thank you. So um, in, in general, I just wanted to add that uh, it's been mentioned before, but um, the ISO TC 307 which is um, holding the, the committee where me and Shinichiro are working, is, uh, has been working hard now for, for several years to try and, uh, and define some standards for the blockchain and distributed ledger technology world, which is, uh, some of you know, and you, those of you who don't, is, a, is not an easy task. <laughs> so, um, and uh, this specific technical report uh, is, um, at least in our minds, a sort of a stepping stone. It's a start uh, of a journey where, uh, at some point, we would like to, to, to publish uh, uh, some uh, some standards in, in this area. Um, so the technical report focuses on uh, on uh, sort of the management uh, issues of um, that that custodians that, that have been mentioned uh, up to now um, face and the challenges they face, the risks. Uh, it sort of uh, has a sort of um, sort of snapshot view of um, the, the current situation, where we are at, um, showing uh, with specific focus on, uh, of course, on, on the, the custody of, of digital assets. So uh, the particularities that this uh, this uh, sort of um, category has, uh, which of course uh, focuses a lot on the key management, uh, as we all know. The management of keys uh, for digital assets uh, is is one of the main uh, one of the main aspects, um, and so it talks basically about um, the risk, the threats, and the measures uh, which need to be put in place uh, by uh, by custodians to sort of uh, mitigate and 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 um, and shows a bit of the best practices that have been done and that are used in the industry up to now. Uh, so, the, uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, um, a technical report is a, um, it's not itself a, a standard, but it's a, it's a, it's a stepping stone, I would say, uh, to get there. Um, so we are we are quite happy that we're we're very close now uh, to uh, for it to be published. So fingers crossed, soon we should have uh, this published by ISO, uh, which I think is an is an important milestone. Thank you. And uh, so good news, good news is that this technical report will be published probably next month. And uh, so we are now call, calling for the next revision. So we are now calling for contribution for the next revision. So, so I'd like to ask so everyone in, the, in, this, in this planet to provide some con contribution for the next revision of this technical report. And uh, so the last question in this part is for Jameson. So there are many, many uh, security problem here, but also I believe that also technology can help enhance the security of custodian. So what are your view or what are your proposal to use technology to help securing the, the custodian? Well, it really has to be comprehensive. Uh, whenever we are talking about uh, security, uh, especially, you know, cyber security, a single chink in your armor can, you know, Result in the entire house of cards falling down. So, you know, even if you have excellent practices around uh, generating, storing, and accessing the private keys, which is what most people are worried about, it's always possible for an attacker to get somewhere else in your system and essentially trick you into using those keys incorrectly. You know, the the greatest, I think change that we're seeing over the past few years as the security standards, the practices continue to improve in this space, is that the attackers are starting to go after the only weak points that are really left, which is the humans that are involved in the systems. So, you know, we can create better hardware, better software uh, to help secure these keys, but I think ultimately what it's all going to come down to is processes and making sure that you know every single human that is involved in the process 
is not a sole actor, you know, that they have other people who are checking on them and making sure that no mistakes are happening and that no uh, insiders are essentially turning malicious or being tricked somehow. So uh, unfortunately, you know, this is a space that is dynamic. It is always going to continue changing. Uh, it will certainly be an exciting space to continue working in, but uh, there's certainly not going to be any silver bullet that is going to make everyone safe. Uh, the The simple way that I usually put it is that you know anything that can be owned can be stolen, and all we've really done here is taken. Uh, something like uh, gold or physical commodity, and we've digitized it and just created a much more complex attack surface. You know, we get a lot of great uh, utility as a result of the properties of these digital assets, but we've also created a whole slew of new problems for us to think about because they can be taken as easily as they can be uh, leveraged by their owners. So. It's, uh, it's going to require a lot of collaboration, and it's going to require, uh, I think, a lot more hard lessons of, of people, unfortunately, losing access to their keys or, or getting the keys used without their permission. But every, every loss, every, uh, every bad news event is a, a learning experience, and I, I do believe that we will continue to harden the system as long as we continue, you know, collaborating, working with each other to do so. Thank you. And uh, so we have 10 minutes left, I think, that uh, I'd like to move to the, the last question. The, the last question is quite simple, but a difficult question. But this is also how we convince government and customers of the security of the custodian. So this is a, a difficult challenge. But we need to convince government and co customers on the security of the custodian. Uh, I would like to first be asked to David, so on your experience uh, with communicating with government or customers on the security of the crack and custody. Yeah, I think this is a great question. And I, you know, I honestly wouldn't say that I have a great solution for this for this challenge here, but maybe I could just state the challenge and I think um, some of the discussion here on standards and what, what Al is working on are some interesting paths uh, to address some of these challenges. So I think one of the challenges with uh, you know regulator you know working with regulators on the area of, of custody and security is with regard to uh, transparency and, and information. Uh, so, you know, regulators, as you might imagine, will you know often be interested in and push for more uh, information and transparency. So, on one hand, this is entirely logical and makes sense um, that they would. You know, how else will they? You know, kind of ensure compliance uh, with, with you know, requisite regulations and so forth. However, there is a the challenge um, because the more you know detail on information that is you know kind of put down on paper or communicated to more individuals with regard to the specifics and details of a particular security structure, um, you know that is itself a potential path that can increase vulnerability. So, so uh, to the extent. That this information can you know, sort of it gives them a, a potential blueprint for executing attacks, and so there's um, you know most of, you know most of the regulators that have been you know kind of focused on this area for some time are um, aware of this this challenge, and uh, at the same time, just that simple awareness doesn't make it doesn't mean we have you know great solutions for it. So I think this is. Uh, you know, one particular area that is, uh, you know, faces both institutions like Kraken and the regulators as well on how to kind of conduct this uh, conversation and how to communicate about about security and where a particular institution is at. So, um, you know, I don't think we're, we're there with kind of like cryptocurrency specific standards at this point in time, but, you know, I do think it's, it's worthwhile to explore given, you know, it's, it's potential to even help with this challenge among, among others. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, and I think that that's so, 
regulations are different among nations. So I think that regulation in Japan, regulation in the United States, or also in European country, uh, they are very different. And so custodians so need to uh, deal with that differences among nations. And I'd like to ask Flora on the, your view of the differences among nations. OK, thank you. Um, the supervision rules for digital custody is quite different among countries. Some countries require the new cryptocurrency business operating under its existing regulation framework, while other countries may publish new regulation rule or license for digital currency industry. Some countries are taking active and positive action to welcome this new challenge, new, this new change, while others may hesitate to move forward. For example, in America just a few days ago, the Office of the Controller of the Currency, that is OCC, has clarified that national banks and federal civil associations can provide cryptocurrency custody service for customers. The OCC sees banks providing cryptocurrency services as a modern form of traditional bank activities related to custody service. Besides banks, we can also provide custody service if we can get New York Bay license. Um, um, others like Gibraltar and Bermuda could represent the countries who own active and positive attitudes they have both published some policies and licenses, especially for digital currency or virtual currency, like DLT license in Gibraltar. It allows assets transfer and storage through distributed ledger technology, which means it allows the cryptocurrency custody and exchange business. And the Bermuda Monetary Authority has published Virtual Currency Business Act in 2018. The company could apply for its Class F and Class M license to operate cryptocurrency custody and exchange business. While some other countries, like in Germany, it's really difficult to set up a cryptocurrency custody business because of its strict requirements and hesitate attitude towards this new industry. Although the attitude among countries are very different, there is a clear trend that more and more countries are open to welcome this new industry. And this progress has been speed up already. Thank you. Thank you. I think that uh, this is two minutes left. And I, I would like to ask Aldo the final question. So we are, we are creating that ISO document. I think this is a useful tool to have common understanding among all stakeholders, including government, users, engineers, and academia. So, so how we can utilize that standard to enhance understanding among all stakeholders? Oh, well, thank you. Well, I mean, standards, uh, it's, it's one of their main, uh, main uses. One of the main points is um, use them as a sort of basis for mutual understanding. So uh, it's not a, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that the first standard released by uh, TC307 was uh, on um, terminology. I mean, if you don't speak the same language, how are you supposed to uh, then go on and work together? And uh, especially in a, we can say relatively new <laughs> space such as blockchain and DLT, uh, it, it hasn't in the past, and maybe isn't even now, uh, always easy for people even to say, you know, what is a blockchain, what is a DLT, and, and agree on that definition. So we have to start somewhere. Uh, and this is definitely an area where standards can, can help a lot, uh, because once you've defined those standards, then all the stakeholders can sort of at least speak the same language and understand each other. Um, this works at, at obviously at, 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 at many levels, uh, terminology, starting, starting point, uh, reference architecture, uh, and of course, uh, what we are working on, so the security aspects are, are the same. 
so, so I definitely think that standards have a, a, a major role uh, in this. Uh, and uh, it's always difficult to find the balance, and it, that's, that's always the challenge to sort of have uh, standardization without stifling innovation. But I definitely think that uh, both are possible, and, and standards will contribute a lot to um, making this, uh, this market grow and, and, and help, will help the industry. Thank you very much. And I would like to continue this discussion for, for one hour or more. This is an interesting discussion, but unfortunately, mm. so we have none out of time. And uh, thank you for all, so we can understand that, so how custody is important in this ecosystem, and so how that, that securing that custody is so comprehensive but a difficult challenge, but uh, so we have that some tools f of that technology and the standard to have uh, better understanding among stakeholders and to se and securing that this ecosystem. Thank you very much for joining today's discussion, and I, I hope that all of you and everyone staying safe. And and uh, so thank you for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the wonderful discussion. This concludes the session on Breakthrough for Safer Digital Custody, Security and Regulation. Mr. Ercastro, or Ms. Lee, and Mr. Ripley, and Mr. Lop, and Professor Matsuo, thank you very much. Once again, please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much.